Good morning. And we want to take this time to welcome you uh, to King Creek Baptist Church here in Lake Lure. And hopefully you uh, are having a good day. And we're certainly grateful. Had a good Sunday school. I'd like to invite some of you to come to some Sunday school. And uh, uh, so don't forget that. Have a good, uh, it, it's, it's good. And we enjoy that. And appreciate the goodness of the Lord in, in that. I want you to, uh, to remember to pray for those. We have some folks that's very sick, uh, and we need to remember them in prayer. Uh, there's some of the sh our shut-ins, but still now they're still they're in the hospital, and uh, so you just remember them that God will touch them and help them uh, as they uh, recover uh, in this day. So don't forget that. Be praying about it. Pray for our nation. Certainly our nation needs prayer. Uh, and uh, lift it up before the Lord. What we need is revival, folks. I mean a God-fearing, not just a series of meetings, but a God-fearing revival. And that will actually change people's lives. Uh, put a desire to be in the house of the Lord. I, I don't mean to kill time, but I can remember the time... Of, before I ever got saved, I'll tell you, you, church was not my desire. But after I got saved, I'll tell you right now, I've desired to be in the house of God. I've been in churches when I probably should have been at home. But I, I love being in God's house. So it's good to be here. Trust that you've had a good day. Remember now, we're going to have some our, our songs. And remember these things that... Uh, this morning, the music and the songs that we have, there's no special performance rights or any copyright agreement. So keep that in mind as we sing and as we begin to serve the Lord. We'll be back in a few minutes to bring the message. And everybody turn to page 391 in the church hymnal. Sing first, second, last verse.
turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew chapter number 24. I'm going to be continuing on with our study on uncertain times. We're going to time with today's thought uh, on a, uh, the, the, a worldly prophecy, a world, excuse me, worldwide prophecy, a worldwide prophecy. So let's don't forget this, if you will, in God's Word. Matthew chapter 24, and I'm going to read verse number 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Let's go back to the Lord in prayer and ask God to bless and to help us in these days. Our Father, we're thankful for this day. Pray, God, that you would add your blessing to the reading of the Word of God. Help us to Heavenly Father this morning as we try to bring the message and preach what you've given us and worked into our heart. We would pray that you would be with us and just thank you for all that you've done in these days. Pray that you would help and we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Let's look at some other scriptures that I want you to be familiar with here. Uh, I, I want you to remember where we are. In reading in chapter 24 of the book of Matthew, uh, of course, if you have a Schofield Bible, it'll tell you in the part that I read that this is a part of Daniel's 70th week of years in the end time. I want you to go over to the book of 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Uh, no, I'm wrong. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. And we're going to read there. 1 Thessalonians 4. And verse number beginning with verse number 13 in 1 Thessalonians 4. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. And that is a term for Christian death, not lost people's death, but Christian death. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. You know, if someone dies in our family that we know we do have sorrow, but we do not grieve or we do not sorrow as those that have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also even also, even so, them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Look at the statement. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And you say, preacher, I've believed in Christ all my life. Even when I was a little boy, I believed in Christ. This is talking about salvation. Not believing in the existence of a God the devil does that. Not believing in an existence, but believing in him as your personal Lord and Savior. 
Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, that is the dead in Christ, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. I want to show you something else. Now, what am I doing? I'm trying to tell you about the, the rapture. We, the rapture is still on, and it's still going to take place. Look in Revelation. I'm just going to walk you through some of this till we get to a certain place. Now, I want you to look in chapter number one. He makes the statement and tells you who this is to, which is the church. Gives you seven names that are examples of all churches. And then in Revelation 2 through 3, he sends a message to each one of those churches. And in studying these churches, this is a progression of time through the, the church, the church age. In chapter number four, I, I want you to note a statement right here. After this, I looked, and behold, a door. You don't have that underlined in your Bible? You need to open it. You need to uh, mark it. Because this door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a what? Trumpet. We aren't talking about the trumpet, right? <laughs> in Thessalonians. Talking with me, which said, Come up thither, hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Chapter 4, chapter 5 of the book of Revelation is the church in heaven. The church in heaven. Chapter 6 starts the tribulation. First three and a half years will be mild. They're going to be rejoicing and shouting and glad the church is off the scene. That old-fashioned believing church that believed and it stood for things. They're going to rejoice. Let me give you this, by the way, of introduction. This is rather long. I, I tried to, in some way that I could cut this down, but I, I'm going to see if I can. On January the 11th in 2020, the first COVID-19 death was reportedly was reported in a place called Wuhan, China. Two months later, on Wednesday, March the 11th, 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. After the virus had spread to 114 countries and nearly 120,000 people killing more than 4,000 on March the uh, killing more than 4,000 period. On March the 12th Ohio, the state of Ohio became the first state to shut down all K through 12 schools. Stocks tumbled. Churches closed. Theaters closed. Theaters were emptied. Restaurants closed. We closed in about similar to that very time and stayed 
relatively closed until Easter of 2021. There were a few came in, the staff, and those that had did things and inside, but most did not. Most stayed in cars. Some we, I've never seen again, not one time have I seen them again from that day. They're still alive. I haven't read about them. But where they went, nobody knows. But let me say this. Five million, five million, eight hundred and thirty-seven thousand two hundred and sixty deaths until the time that I looked this up on the computer one day this week have died worldwide with COVID-19. Nine hundred and twenty-seven thousand one hundred and fifteen people that were alive at the beginning of 2020 are now dead. That does not count what has died since I looked it up on the computer this week. What I'm saying to you, and I want to read this to you again, I'm preaching to you about worldwide prophecy. Worldwide prophecy. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. Those of you who do not have a King James Bible, uh, chances are, not every one of them, but chances are, if you, especially if you have a, a, a ESV, does not have this word pestilence in it. It just has famines and goes to the others, just a few things. This is an important word. This word pestilence is. This word means anywhere from animals like pest, plagues, a plague, all these different things that it says uh, in the word of God. There's in this passage of scripture that I'm reading, the reason I've read to you about the rapture, I realize that in the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew, it's deal, dealing mostly with what's going to take place with Israel. But some of these things, we're going to begin to see some beginning of these things before the rapture of the church. I think that's what we're seeing. I, I want to give you, if I might, six things, and uh, I'm not going to dwell very long on them, but I, I want to give you quick six things out of this chapter. First of all, is the in the first beginning with verse 4, we find the deception by false Christ. That's what all of this is going to happen in the tribulation. But we've got a little bit of this going on now, right? False doctrines, those that don't believe the Bible. One of these days, I'm going to preach on some things out of Genesis. I don't know when, but on some things. Uh, but... You and I know that there's an element of people out here in this world that do not, even though they have church hooked to their name, they do not believe this Bible truly. If they did, they would not back 
some of the things that's going on in our world. I mean, there's some things that's just wrong. According to this, hey, I just might as well quit playing around. There's some things that according to this Bible that are wrong. Homosexuality is one of them. I believe that a homosexual can be saved. I think they can be converted. I think they can be saved and go on and live a good Christian life. I believe that. They're, they tell you you can't. If you're that way, that's the way you are. That's a lie. That's a lie from the devil. You can, if you follow God's word. Now, if you follow some worldly plan, you may end up that way. But if you follow God and God's word, you can be saved. Amen. You can be saved. Deception by false Christ. Disputes and warfare uh, among nations. Hey, look here. We're right on the verge of having getting involved in another conflict with Russia, uh, like similar to the Cold War, maybe even worse than that, over there in, in Ukraine. You know who he reminds me of? Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler was at the peace accords, and his, his people, they were talking peace. They were making promises to Great Britain that, uh, you know, uh, that those two nations would never fight again with one another. And all the time they were surrounding them with war weapons. All the time. Yeah, that's, a, that's who he reminds us of. If you'll study history, see this bunch of lunatics, they want to do away with history. You know why? Because you're doomed to repeat it. You're doomed to repeat it. The disputes and warfare, verses 6 and 7. The dis Number three, disease and famine worldwide. I want to stop on this one just a little bit more. On this idea of disease and famine worldwide. In Verse 7 and 8 that I've read to you, and I'm going to read them again. The Bible said, and greeting, uh, no, wrong chapter. Uh, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, and in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. In the book of, in the Old Testament book of Haggai, now it might take me just a minute to find that one, the Old Testament book of Haggai. Oh, I turned right to it. <laughs> That's a miracle. All right, here we are. Haggai 2 and verse 2. Speak now, to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? How uh, do you see it now? Is it not? in your eyes in comparison as it is to nothing. Look in verse 22 now. That same chapter. Verse number 22. And I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms and I will destroy the strength of kingdoms of the heathen. I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down every one by the sword 
of his brother. This idea of this word pestilence, it comes from the Greek word, the Greek word there that would be for that, loimos, loimos. And it means plague, plague. I'll tell you an interesting study. I was going to do this. I did not. Go back and look and see if you can figure out, and you might can do this on the internet, how many plagues that we've had in the world or even in America. I can remember some that we studied about in history way back in the early part. A lot of times it was smallpox, cholera, all kinds of things. In World War One, at the end of World War One, we had what is called the Spanish Flu, and we've had other things. In the seventies, there was a, 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 a new virus that come out called AIDS. And all these things that got into the blood supply, or could had the potential. I'll put it like that of getting into the blood supply. All of these things, they're, they're pestilences, they're plagues that have come upon nations. These things are worldwide things. Millions of people, thousands of people died with some of these things. Number four is the deliverance of believers uh, of, of believers in verse number 9 that's in the tribulation that's talking about in verse number 9 about the tribulation verse uh, no, the, four, the fifth thing is the defection of false believers in verse 10 through 13 and number 6 is the declaration of the gospel uh, the gospel that's the gospel of the kingdom to the whole world Number two, now, back to the number two, the point that we want to talk about. We've talked about these things, and I want to give you those six things there. The credibility of the Bible. I want you to see the credibility of the Bible. Do you believe, what do you, how much do you believe this book? Do you believe this book is the truth? Amen. Do you believe this is God's word, and this is what... God will judge this world by. Amen. I believe that. Yeah. Now you, you I, I hope you do. Now, for more than 50 years, for more than 50 years, I've been a serious student, seriously studying the Word of God. The Bible. I've never failed to be astounded by the events of the tribulation that's going to take place during the time of tribulation. Over in the book of Ezekiel, now, that's the reason I'm saying, do you remember this? Uh, some of you uh, are not as old as I am, but some of you are, uh, I know, remember this. Do you remember in the 70s, the 60s, and the 70s, and 80s, when we were, uh, we would read about Russia and, uh, and all these things, and nobody would uh, do anything, you know, uh, Russia was our enemies, and they were our arch, arch enemy. And uh, all these things took place, and everybody was looking, basically at that time, for the Lord to come. And, and we were doing all these things in the 70s and 80s, 60s. Let me, can, let me share a little something with you. 
One of the places I worked, I, I, I'm not going to call out my name, but one of the places that I worked in the from the 60s all the way through to in the 90s, every year, every year, we would take little old things of radioactive material every year, usually in March. And we would go out, or they would, they would go out on the feet in a little in a little place, and they would hide those radioactive things. Little things not much bigger than your finger, but they're like that. And we would take Geiger counters and things that detect radiation and all of this stuff. We'd have to wear these dosometers. And record if we come in contact with any of this stuff. And for every year, for 30 years, for every year, we would go out there and we would hunt those things. And part of our thing would be would be to plan a way that we could evacuate mass group of people from one from our town, your town, safely to a place that they could get to safely in case we were attacked with nuclear weapons. All that happened. In 1990, we had a, a little scrimmage over there with Iran or Iraq. And they have all these Russian weapons, and I'll tell you, they just fell apart. And over there, and of course, I think that was simply God. And after that, very soon, I think it was in 90 or 91, that the old Soviet Union just dissolved. It dissolved. And everybody thought, oh man, we've got it made. Here's, here's our enemies gone. Russia. And, and all of this is defeated. But what I'm telling you is, it's in the Bible. Do we believe the Bible? Can we, can we trust the Bible, the credibility of God's Word? Amen. Look at Ezekiel 20, uh, 38, verse 22. Ezekiel 38, 22. And I will plead against him with the pestilence. There's that word again. And with blood, bloodshed. That's what he's talking about. And will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the pe many people which are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Similar to what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. We see these things. Look, it's in, it's in the Bible. We can believe that. It's God's Word. Look at Ezekiel 39 and 12. There's going to be a battle. Here's where God's going to deal with Mr. Russia. Right here. Ezekiel 38 and Ezekiel 39. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them that they may cleanse the land. Take seven months to cleanse the land from death, war equipment, and all this type of stuff. And it's going to take all that, all that time. Let me give you some other scripture. Look in Revelation. Look in the book of Revelation, chapter number 8. That might be Revelation 9. I, my writing. Here, Revelation 9, 18. I think, I think it is. Revelation 9, 18. But these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone 
which issued out of their mouths. Of course, he's talking about after during the time of that sixth trumpet and these armies from the Far East. He's going to deal with Russia, and I've got news for you, he's going to deal China. Mm -hmm. Or all that group, not maybe so much that, that all that Mid-Eastern group that the Bible talks about, that unnumerable number. He will. I'm glad I'm going to be in heaven. Amen. He tells us this. Here's what the credibility of the Bible. Quickly. You know what? The, the credibility of, of the Bible. Do you, do you realize of the uncertainty of life? Do you, do you realize that, the uncertainty of your life and my life? Over in the book of Job, in the Old Testament, I tell you what, do I, I know uh, some of our folks that spend a lot of time in the cemetery, they're, they're taking care of it, but uh, you know, if you, if you walk through the cemetery, I don't care if you're five year old, if you're one year old, or you, you're being carried in your mama's arms, you're going to find somebody your age in that cemetery at your time. In the book of Job, chapter number 9, and verse number 25. And now my days are swifter than a post. Have you ever been riding down the road and go by a fence and see how fast the fence posts go by? Try counting them. <laughs> they flee away and they see no good. They are passed away as the swift ships, as the eagle that hasteneth to the prey. That's Job's description of the swiftness of life. He talks about it in verse 25. Now my days are swifter than that talks about the post. He also talks about it as the weaver show in another spot. Look in Job 14 and 1. Man is born is man is born of a woman and is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. James, over in the book of James, James chapter 4. James. What am I telling you? I'm telling you we need to be ready. Amen. You need to know. James chapter 4 and verse, 4, and verse number 14. Whereas ye know not that what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? That's a question. What is your life? It is it is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Have you ever been out on a good here? Now, we're going to see some of this. It's getting closer to spring. And, you know, it's come a real warm rain and, the, and it's rained and then... Um, the, the fog is rising, that vapor, and, and that sun is out. And I mean, you, you just can't see hardly anything. That vapor is so uh, uh, full on the ground, fog, or whatever you want to call it, that vapor that's out there. And boy, that sun come up, and it's just gone like that. Just gone. I saw this this year. <laughs> I thought, now this wasn't very big, but I saw this. Now, there was this little old, Big old, little old vapor thing, about as probably, I don't know how big it was. I'll say as big as this pulpit. And it was in the sky. And about the time I was going to tell Gales, I said, Look at that little old cloud and that, that little old thing. 
And that bright sunlight come up and it just shoo, gone. Just like that. A vapor. That's how uncertain. The Bible speaks to you uh, about the uncertainty of life. That's why you need to know the credibility of the Bible. Because it speaks to you about the uncertainty of life. But then it tells us this. It tells us of the sufficiency of Jesus. Aren't you glad of that? Mm -hmm. The sufficiency of our Lord. John chapter number 16. Book of John chapter number 16 and verse number uh, 33. John 16 and 33. He tells us, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Amen. In the world you shall have tribulation. We're going to have trouble. When they get this one thing settled, if they do, if they get this one thing settled, we're going to, there's going to be something else coming. Tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Look in that same book. John chapter 14 and verse number 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. Number five. We see victory comes. Victory of overcomers. I want to give you some things here. Right quick. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you five things. Victory of overcomers. You know how, you know how you're going to be victorious? Your prayer life. Amen. Your prayer life. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to spend some time in prayer. We need to be prayerful people. There ought to be a time in your, uh, there ought to be a time when you I'll tell you, every morning, I mean, you shouldn't even go outside to, to throw the cat out to you say, Lord, thank you for a good night. Help me as I go throw this cat out. <laughs> it might, you might fall over him. Your prayer life. We need strong prayer lives. There's things coming. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you the rapture. I believe the rapture. I, be, I, I haven't changed one bit on the rapture. But one thing we don't tell you, or you haven't made me realize, some of this stuff, we're going to be seeing some of this stuff, it's going to get worse and worse, and then the, the Lord, the church is going out, and then it's going to really get bad, worse. Your prayer life, your duty, did you know what your duty is? My duty is to serve others. You realize that? Can I say this? No names. There's a woman who tells me, is telling, tells, telling that the Lord let her live for one purpose, and that's to feed her preacher every Sunday. And she gets all upset when he can't get there. <laughs> your duty, my duty, your duty to serve others. Look, it isn't all about you, and it isn't all about me. We're to serve 
others. Your peace. Peace. Did you know the Bible said to pray for the peace of Jerusalem? Your peace. You know what your peace is a lot of times? Is you need to count your blessings. Songwriter wrote about that. Count your many blessings, count them one by one. Count your blessings. First John, not first John, but John 1 16 said, and for all and of his fullness have all we receive grace for grace. Count your blessings. Count. Look in Ephesians 1, 3. Ephesians 1, 3. And see what he tells us there. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us. Boy, you got that underlined in your Bible. I have mine. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. Over in the book I read before, in Thessalonians, chapter number, in 1 Thessalonians, chapter number 1, and verse, I mean, well, wrong, wrong, uh, chapter 5, in 1 Thessalonians, Chapter number 5 and verse number 18, I think. Let me get there. Verse 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. I tell you, when I read that, I have to cry out, Oh, me. Oh, me. Look at these other two things and we'll be through. Your purpose. What's your purpose? Well, I'll tell you, here's what we need to do in this time of this pandemic. Our purpose ought to be is be calm. One of the most blessed things that my wife finally, and I finally listened to her, she told me, turn the news off. Turn it off. It's controlled out of the pits of the damned. Turn it off. Your purpose is to be calm. And you know what else? Carry right on. Keep on serving the Lord. Look in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse number 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We need to be calm and carry on. Still winning souls, still serving the Lord. We ought to keep on going. Amen. And keep on going. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. 
turn the TV off, turn off the computer, turn off anything, turn Facebook off, turn off anything that interferes with you and God. Turn it off. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's your purpose. Here's your plan. Here's our plan. Do the right thing. Very simple, isn't it? Do the right thing. In Luke's Gospel, chapter number 5, In Luke's, Luke's Gospel, chapter number 5, and verse number 14. In Luke 5, 14. Simon, whom he also named Peter, Chapter 5, verse 14. I was in the wrong one. And he charged them to tell no man. But go and show thyself to the priest and offer for my cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Look in verse 24. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. Do the right thing. That ought to be our plan. In other words, keep on keeping on, doing the right thing. Don't lay out of church. Don't do this. Don't keep on doing the right thing. Keep on. Just keep on keep on reading your Bible. Keep on praying every day. Keep on trusting in the Lord every day. Amen. Just keep on doing what the Lord would have us to do. Because we're going to see some of these things that's taking place in our world. And this, some of this stuff is from the Lord. And we need to see it. All right. Their head bowed and their eye closed right quickly. I want to say this to you. I, regardless of where you're listening, if you're listening to me by Facebook or you're, you're sitting here in this building. If your life isn't right with Christ, you know what you need to do. You need to get it right. If you're lost, you need to get saved. If you're cold and indifferent and you've got away from the Lord and you, uh, you are waiting to certain things get just exactly right to serve the Lord, then you need to get right with God. You need to serve the Lord. Just keep on. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. And if you're here this morning and you're listening to me by radio or you're listening to me by Facebook, wherever you are, I ask you, what is your relationship with your God? If you're saved, then you need to, and I need to work for, more for him. And we need to let, quit letting fear take over our life and scare us to death. We need to serve the Lord. Now fear is, getting over our fear is not being stupid. I know I'm not supposed to say that word. But it's doing things 
in the name of the Lord. It's doing things for the Lord. In your life with Christ, you may need to do that. Do it right now. Ask the Lord to come into your heart and ask Him to save you if you've not been saved. And then the very next thing you do, get up out of off your knees and you tell somebody what you've done. You tell them, I've, I've asked Christ to come into my life. And then you find you a church that you can serve the Lord in right now. Our Father, thank you for this day. We pray, God, that you would add your blessing to the reading of the Word of God. In thy wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. Don't forget the service tonight at 6 o'clock. All right, I'm coming outside.